Right. So um, this one is a question that comes from Obri Chikosi. Right. It's a question that is based on functions and inverses. All right. Cool. So according to what is given to us here, we are told the graph of f of x equals a to the power of x, where a is greater than zero, and g of x equals to the inverse of f, where g is the inverse of f, uh, sketched below. The point negative one to two lies on f, m is the point of intersection of f and g. Okay, cool, right. Now, the first question says to us, we need to find the value of a. It says to us, determine the value of a. So allow me to highlight them differently. So I'm gonna use green to show you the graph of f. The graph of f is this one here. It is the exponential graph, right? That's the graph of f. We will label it f of x, and then we'll use blue for the graph of g. The graph of g, which according to the examiner, this is the inverse graph. It's the inverse of the green graph. Okay, cool. This is the graph of g, of x. Cool. So now we are required to find the value of a. Now, if you are asked to work out the value of a, which happens to be the base of the exponential function from the graph of f, you just need a point to substitute for x and y. So in order for me to solve that problem, I'm just simply going to do the following. I'll say, okay, what do we know? We know for a fact that the graph of f of x was given to us as f of x is equal to a to the power of x. There's a point that the graph passes through and that point is the point um, uh, one and two. Let's look at it closely. It's basically negative one and two. So it's passing through this particular point. So I'm gonna substitute these coordinates for both x and y because we all know that f of x is just as good as y. So I'll put two here and I'll put a to the power of negative one. And then the rest is algebraic skills. I'll change that to one over a is equal to two. And if you simplify, you'll then find that the value of a is basically as good as one over two. So that is uh, the answer to the value of a, which then would mean that the graph of f of x would be f of x equals to one over two to the power of x. You were not really asked to write the equation. You were asked to find the value of a, but this is the implication of what will result from what we have just calculated. Okay, cool. Moving on to the second part, 3.2.2 says, determine the equation of g in the form y equals to whatever, right? Now, what is g? g is the inverse of the graph of f, which means we are being asked here to figure out the equation of the inverse of the exponential graph, right? So how do you do that? Well, I'll come here and say, okay, this was number one. For number two, we are asked to find the equation of g and we were told that g is the inverse of f. Now, according to what we have, we know that f of x is as good as one over two to the power of x, right? Now, we can basically rewrite this as y equals to a half to the power of x. Now, whenever anyone asks you to find the inverse, there are two things that you do. Number one, you just have to interchange or to swap x and y. Where does x you put y and where does y you put x? Secondly, you will then make y the subject of the formula. That's basically what you need to do. Now, I'm sitting with y equals to half to the power of x. That's going to change. It's going to be x is half to the power of y. And then the rest is just to try and make y the subject of the formula. This is where the logarithms, the concept of logs comes in. And you should know by now that the answer will be the log or base half of x. That's basically what y is going to eventually be. So the equation of g of x will be log uh, base half of x. Right, beautiful stuff right there. The third question, that question is asking us, it says to us, write down the equation of the line which divides f and g symmetrically. Right, we want the equation of the line that divides f and g symmetrically. When you say symmetrically, it means it divides them into two equal pieces. Now, if I had to draw that line on my Cartesian plane, it is simply going to look like this. This is the line of symmetry that will divide both the graph of f and the graph of g symmetrically. And by now, you should know that that graph or that straight line that divides those two symmetrically is given by the equation y is equal to x. It's the line of symmetry between a graph and its inverse. Very important. So the solution for the third question, the line of symmetry is just simply going to become y is equals to x. Simple and very, very important. All right. 
The fourth question is saying something exciting to us. We are being told, if the line y is equal to x passes through m, we have to have it passing through m, otherwise it wouldn't be the line of symmetry, right? If the line y equals to x passes through m, show that x log half minus log of x is equal to zero, right? Now let's go back and check what we are dealing with here. We've got three lines or three graphs in this case. We've got the green graph, which is the exponential graph, the graph of f of x. We've got its inverse, the log graph, and we also have the line y is equal to x. Now I'm going to write all of them here so that you can see what we are dealing with. We've got, let's use yellow. We've got y is equal to x as one graph. We've got the other one, which is one over two to the power of x. And the third line is a line log base half of x, right? This is the three graphs that you're actually dealing with. Now, all of these graphs are passing through point M. They're all passing through point M. And we need to show that x log half minus log x is equal to zero. So basically, I'm going to take any two of them. In this case, I'll take the first two and solve them simultaneously because this things are all y equals to something. So we want to, it's more like if you were looking to find the coordinates of the point M where these two graphs meet each other, right? If one graph is y equals to x and the other one is y equals to half to the power of x, it means I can simply equate them and say half to the power of x is as good as x, right? Equate them because they're both equal to y and they meet at point M. Once I'm done doing this, I just have to rewrite what I am looking at in the form of the way the examiner has expressed this, which means we will need to log ourselves in here. So you put a log on the left and you also put a log on the right hand side. If you put a log, you need to know what that log is going to allow you to do. So log of a half to the power of x is equals to log of x. Just log yourself in on both sides of uh, this equation. Once you're done logging in, you can then download the exponents, right? This is actually an easier way to help you to understand what is happening. Then you end up with x log of one over two is equal to the log of x, which is um, as good as what the examiner wanted us to write. So then it means the x log of half minus log of x will then become zero, which is exactly what they were asking us to express. So the idea here is pretty simple. It's like if you were being asked to figure out the coordinates of m, those two graphs meet each other at m so you can solve them simultaneously. Okay, cool. The third question, um, the um, 3.2.5, we are being asked now to write down the range of uh, f. Okay, the range of f. Write down the range of f. Okay. Now, if we are being asked to write down the range of this one has already been done up above. Okay, we're now on number five. Number five is asking us to write down the range of the graph of f. Now you should know whenever anyone asks you to work out the range, it means that they're interested in all the y values that the graph covers, right? This is on the graph of f. Remember, the graph of f looks exactly like that, right? It is exactly like what you're looking at right now. Okay, cool. So we just want to find the range of this graph. We are looking for all the y values covered by this graph. And you will agree with me that this graph of f of x is visible for all the y values above the x-axis, right? It does, it does appear for all the y values above the x-axis, but it is not there for the values below the x-axis. Since the asymptote of this graph will definitely have to be the x-axis. The asymptote of the graph will be the x-axis. So the range of the graph of f will just simply be all y values that are above the x-axis. So that means y is greater than zero, will be the range of this graph. There's another way of expressing the same thing. Somebody could have expressed this in a form, y is the element of zero to infinity. It's basically the same thing. It doesn't mean anything different. So it's up to you how you want to write your answer when you're writing the range, right? And then um, the last question, which is question six. Let's go to check what question six is asking us to do in this case. So the last question, 3.2.6, says, for which values of x is the graph of g greater than zero? For which values of x is the graph of g greater than zero? Right. Now, greater than zero literally implies positive. 
So when we ask you these kinds of questions, where is the graph of G greater than zero? It does help to rewrite this in English. For some weird reason, I have actually realized that when you change the mathematical notation to English format, and you start thinking about the question in a form of words, it starts to make more sense and it helps you to figure out what the solution is going to be. So when I say g of x greater than zero, in simple words, it just means where the graph of g is positive. And graphs are positive above the x-axis. If they said less than, I would be looking for all the parts where the graph is below the x-axis. So they want it where it's positive, which means they want where it is above the x-axis. Let's go and check where the blue graph is above the x-axis. Now, if you go back to the Cartesian plane and we look at our blue graph, the blue graph. The blue graph is above the x-axis. I'm going to now use uh, a black marker to show you, right? It is above here. This is where the graph is positive. It's positive all the way here. This is where this graph is positive until at this point. Because after that, the graph goes below the x-axis and it suddenly becomes negative everywhere. So we want all those x values where this graph is above the x-axis. You will agree with me, it's from that black dot I put there going back, which means going left. Now, you will need to know what is the x value at that point. So that's the x-intercept. And you guys should know that the x-intercept is going to be 1, where this blue graph cuts the x-axis. This simply means that the solution for the third question is that this graph is the g of x is less than 0, where for all x values that are smaller than 1, before 1, this graph has been above the x-axis. But we can't keep it as just being x is less than 1 because we are implying that all the other x values before 1 will also be true. Remember, the blue graph also has an asymptote on the y-axis. It will never pass the y-axis. So you need to be careful of that and say all the x values between 0 and 1, this graph is going to be above the x-axis, which means the graph of G will be positive. Right.